What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Bittersweet Podcast. It's your girl, Antana. And I'm Rahel. And we're back in the studio with a solo episode. Yes. What's up? up? What's up? I'm good. Chilling? Yeah. Your hair looking cute. Love the strands of red. Yes. Had to do like a little pop of color. Yeah. It's like visible, but um, yeah, I'm good. I love getting my hair done. Yeah. Same. I did. I did like a little... Quick ting. A quick ting before the real ting, you yeah. know what I mean? Because we have um, obviously things coming up in the next couple of weeks. Mm. So I needed to do like a protective style because the gel on the f- hair was not like brushing it back gel every day. Yeah. My edges are c- screaming. I didn't know that. Do you use, what gel do you use? Right Oat? now I'm using, it's I'm using bread. You know bread gel? Yeah. And personally, I think because my hair is like s- so thick, it doesn't do the, it doesn't, hold it right yeah. it does the job yeah. but like by the end of the day it's, it's not mm. it's not it mm. and i don't know like i've been doing the ponytail look and it's just looking like two different textures mm. so i wasn't i wasn't feeling it yeah but that ponytail was, was like oh nice. that ponytail <laughs> that ponytail shout out to <laughs> shout out to hello yaki because yeah. like sh- yeah that was the ponytail yeah <laughs> that is the ponytail i loved it um, i feel wait i feel like i sh- i i want to shout out um Samira. Yeah. Abby Cosmetics. Yes. Yes, yes, Gray yes, yes. For doing my hair. She's a she's your go to. She's my go to. She's literally your go to. She did my weave for the live show. Yeah. Um killed it. And yeah, she's very quick. Bro, the fact like, that you told me you started at one and you were on your way to the studio at four. Yeah, it's crazy. None of this like um you know, like stopping. starting and stopping and taking like six hours. Yeah, prices. Prices are good. Yeah, considering like h- how expensive a lot of these stylists are, and also it's like it's in Footscray. So yeah. for me, it's like I don't want like I always prioritize convenience over money. Yeah, it's just what I'm like. So it's like I'd rather go somewhere quick that someone who's quick, easy, da da da, than like travel like you know far. I hear that, and it's just—it's the fact that it's just consistent for you. Like you don't yeah. feel like you—you you know what job you're gonna get when you go to her. Yeah, that's love that. What you want. Love it. Love it. Um, before we go into the bittersweet segment, I do want to do a little. Obviously, last week we had that episode, and um, everyone was coming for me in the comments because <laughs> I told the story wrong. <laughs> So I just want to, you know, take accountability, like apologize for that because that one was so, it was so awkward. I watched the video back and I was like, true, she actually met the guy on Bumble, not Airtasker. That changes it. That does change it, but I feel like it makes him, it's even worse Mm. because now you're not really, you are hired for a job, but like you met her on a dating app to actually date her. So she's less bitter. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I agree with that. I think, like, it, it changed my perspective a lot when I heard that. And mm. I was like, mm, that's just a bit, like, I don't know. And I, and I was reading the comments and stuff, and it's like, it is a bit, like, I don't know, mixing business with pleasure, a bit unprofessional. Mm. Like, yeah. In general, it's unpro- I get it. I do understand the whole, like, mixing business and pleasure. And I understand how she was a bit entitled for it, mm. but... Um, I don't know. I think for me, it's just like, it's all perspective, to be honest. We're not going to get into all of yeah, that. But I just wanted to put it out there <laughs> yeah, that, yeah, I kind of told the story wrong. So my bad. Um, but yeah, let's move on to the episode. Because <laughs> I'm reading it like, what? Yeah. What is that story? I'm like, nah, let me tell these people. Nah, I was wrong. <laughs> uh, okay, bitter sweet segment. What yes. is your bitter of the week? Yes. So before I um, talk, say my bitter, I just want to do a bit of a trigger warning because obviously like, this content um what i'm about to talk to is could be triggering for a lot of people um there's mention of assault Mm -hmm. and other things so yeah just be mindful of that yeah um but my bitter this week is the allegations against p diddy so cassie who was dating p diddy for like over a decade on Mm. and off Mm. yeah I think they met when she was 19 or yeah. something. Yeah. Um, and he was 36. 36. Crazy. Um, she alleged that over the course of their relationship, he assaulted her multiple times, vici- viciously beating and raping her and controlling every aspect of her life. Um, so she, yeah, she just reported a cycle of abuse and also sex trafficking, which is crazy. Um and she was asking for 
thirty million dollars mm-hmm. for the um, lawsuit. So obviously, when I saw that, I was just like disgusted. Mm. I think it's so scary that all of this was happening, and like obviously, we don't really have an idea. And I'm happy that um, a lot of people. There was no. I was worried that there would be a bit of back and forth. Like, I was worried some people might be, like, you know, like, another black man Mm. um, being cancelled and all of these things. But it didn't happen. Everyone was just, like, this man is guilty. He was guilty. Because I think Diddy has had so many allegations over the years. Like, his relationship with J-Lo was Mm. um, a lot of, like, I think there was a lot of sus things happening. Kim Porter... Mm. And I used to, I remember I was seeing stuff he'd post because he'd post about her and be like talking about how, you know, he's, he, she was his love and mm. how he misses her and all this stuff. But then all this stuff happened with Cassie and I went on, like, I just went down a whole like a rabbit hole yeah. and it was like just stuff that was coming out um, about his relationship with Kim mm. and how basically he poisoned her Mm. and then there was like a message that went out to her friend saying like um he got me or something like that Mm. you can tell he's just a master manipulator yeah and this guy with with everything happening with cassie it was like the allegations that were made sex trafficking they would have days that were called like freak 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 fo's or freak freak outs or something like that where he would ask her to like dress up in lingerie and like Mm. he would bring in male prostitutes Mm. for her to like sleep with in Mm. front of in front of him and he would like instruct them to do things say things he'd drug her she was on like copious amounts of drugs apparently just like knocked out and then you know it was like ecstasy coke weed drink alcohol everything she was out and she did a lot of that to disassociate as well from all the things he was making her do and it's like yeah you can like at first i was like okay there was so many times where she came in left came in and left but it's like she was a 19 year old girl obviously Mm -hmm. trying to get into the industry this man took advantage of that but in the worst way possible yeah it was just dirty yeah yeah it's scary stuff i'm yeah i don't know i'm i'm so like I'm just glad that I wish I wish she wrote that book because mm. I feel like there's so much that needs to be uncovered but I'm also glad that she doesn't have to relive the trauma of going public with these things yeah. because yeah. it is really traumatizing especially in such a public realm and social media mm. you know like that would just be horrible but I think like There was obviously such a power dynamic and that's why you can't necessarily blame her for like going back because she was 19, he was 30 something, he's this big successful guy, he's PDD, like, you know, there's like a, I'm sure there's so much we don't know and I'm sure there was like some type of like coercive control happening there Mm. because when you're in an abusive relationship, like, yeah, you're not you you don't have that agency to be able to just mm. like do what you like to, to leave and stuff so and i'm sure you would think like you're obviously she's building her career so for her it's like this man mm. can make it go in an instance mm. like music mogul mm. big te- big name like he has so much control over her yeah and i just feel like i don't know when you're put in that position obviously you don't feel like you have any other option no. um and he was a psycho like he was he um, uh, there was like an allegation made that he blew up kid cuddy's car after they started dating yeah. and he conf- like he confirmed that i think kid cuddy yeah yeah like it's crazy do you know what's so scary though rahal from like just reading all this stuff about the industry obviously like going into the loophole of like seeing what happened to his ex like Mm. partner kim porter there was this song about nikki nikki was like i'm thinking about taking it plotting on how i can take cassie away from diddy and i'm like this is stuff that they know within the industry i can't and this is stuff that's re like that's just surfacing now do you know how many things that how many things would have just been swept under the rug Mm -hmm. not just with diddy but with everyone yeah. and how like i don't know hollywood is evil it's scary the music industry is scary we didn't have social media back then tiktok cancel culture all this stuff did not exist mm. and now it's like people digging stuff up now like it's some hot gossip but i'm like that is really 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 scary because mm-hmm. it was happening obviously during the time where we were growing up and it's like we're seeing all these artists where you're just looking past all this all the things that are being said yeah oh my god it's terrifying and that's the thing, there was no, like, 
um, yeah, there was no like, there was no outlet for things like that. And I think we know like, especially the hip hop industry, mm. there was even that documentary that came out a while, I can't remember what it was called, but it was talking about <laughs> women in the industry mm. and how it's so misogynistic. Mm. And you see it even now, like the only way to one of the only ways to be a successful female rapper mm. is to be like hypersexual in some mm. way. It's like you can't, you don't, you're not afforded the same privilege as male rappers mm. to be able to just be talented. Mm. And I don't think there's anything wrong with like being um, sexually open and things like that. But it does like it's starting to, and it's a shame because when I look at successful white artists, I just really see this. It's you can see the difference between the way a lot of black female artists are like put portrayed mm, mm. and like hypersexual and da da da. It's not the same for um, white artists, and I guess I don't even know if it's a gender th- race thing, but it's definitely the industry it's that kind of like and also the, I think that. the consumers of the music like yeah. as well. Maybe like culturally, mm. just different. Like we consume music differently. Mm. We like hip hop is very sexualized. So it's like maybe that is just, I don't know, that's just kind of the way that they went as well. Like, because yeah. obviously they're making it in that music. They're maybe working with those like labels and mm-hmm. things like that. So it's like you're gonna, your music is under this category. This mm. is how you have to be. Mm. Yeah. I don't know, but it's, yeah, that's a good point. It's just, I don't know. You just really know that sad. there's some like, yeah. there was a there was an artist like a neo soul artist Jag- Jaguar right, and she came out with so many things about that neo soul um, like community of people like really? Common, Erica Badu, Jill Scott, mm. um, like all of the the men as well in that space, and she's like they're disgusting. Like they would have like tour tour buses, and they would like be forced to have sex with the other with the men in there. Like women were s- afraid to sleep sometimes because of what would like the men just would just pull up mm-hmm. to their like bed and it'd be expected mm. she came out with all this stuff anyway and it was like yeah she was like talking about erica badu she was talking about jill scott and what these women had to do to kind of make their way to the top and like just it's just disgusting it's disgusting it's really yeah. disgusting how they're like taken advantage of yeah and you can you can see how it would happen in like such a male dominated dominated industry and i think it's getting better hopefully but in the time of like when Cassie was probably with Diddy, Diddy or getting with him as like a 19 year old girl, mm. I'm sure it's not the love, like love story, obviously, mm. that like we kind of thought it was. Mm. Like you see like what I'm sure. And a lot of other female artists or women in the industry have to, would have to deal with. So Do you know I'm just crazy. Do you feel like anyone ever questioned the fact that they were together? Like, people in the industry, like, she comes out and this ma- this 19-year-old girl is with this 36-year-old man. Like, is that normal? Yeah, I think it's definitely normalized. It's even, like, you see people like Tyga and shit getting with yeah, Kylie Kyle Jenner, Jenner when she was, like, 16 years old. Yeah. And saying, like, that's public. Yeah. And there's no shame. So, imagine what people do on the DL. Like, yeah. you, we just all ignore the fact that she was a teenager. And I can't think of any other examples off the top of my head. But R. I know Kelly and other, Aaliyah. Yeah. R. Kelly, was, I think she was 15. Yeah. This man, like, married her at, I think, around that age. It's so crazy because do you remember what you were like when you were 15? Yes. Like, like so naive, yeah. so stupid. Yeah. If someone came to me with a deal, it'd be like, oh, my God, this is like, mm. you know. And imagine that there, like, I feel like growing up in America is so different. Like, mm. it's just a completely different ball game. Yeah. And it's like, you're obviously thinking about your family. You're thinking about just, like, getting out of the, yeah. the whatever whatever your situation is. Like, you're obviously trying to provide for the family. Like, it's an opportunity at the mm. end of the day. And this man is out here, like, throwing cash around like it's nothing. Mm. The deals they're signing were crazy back then as well. Mm. Also, imagine like being so young and not having the backing of a lawyer, not having anyone. So you're not, who's reading your documents? Mm. Your parents? Like who understands the legal language that's being used? That's why they get stuck in these crazy contracts. I know. And that's exactly what Diddy did to so many artists. Mm. Stole from them, basically. Like it's so, it's so evil. That's why it's like even, I don't know. I don't know. I find it so gross. There was like, apparently Usher was in his like, 
Diddy had like this house back then and it was like I think it was just kind of like a camp or something that was happening and Usher was like 10 mm. or 12 or something and he'd be there and I don't know what was happening but I know that they were doing drugs and like it was just crazy mm. Little Wayne Little Wayne it was like assaulted assaulted like yeah. raped by mm. Birdman for years mm. it's like you gu- you guys are literally just yeah, I don't know like it's really it's like it's disgusting it's so disgusting this industry is gross yeah they really need it's like it needs to be like audited or something like someone needs to go but in i don't think it would like be that bad now on. you know what i mean i think it would still be bad but not on that level maybe not on that level but i still think ndas yeah you have to sign them like do you know how much we don't know because of like the power even someone like diddy like maybe he obviously didn't get cassie to sign one but like if you have money you can get away with anything Mm. imagine someone something horrible happens to you you're like struggling in life the way like a a lot of us are like Mm. financially and someone offers you like even two hundred thousand dollars to not say anything Oh, I'm not the her- say anything. She got beat. Mm. First of all, like the last time that he he literally raped her, the last time that they were like breaking things off. But the, there was a hotel that they were at, and he she tried to run away, mm. and he like was throwing glass at her, like glass vases. He beat her, and then he the hotel had footage, and then he paid them fifty thousand dollars to keep their mouth shut and delete the, and give them the footage yeah. to give him the footage. So, yeah, this guy's obviously mo- like the fact that he she said nothing. Like mm. she completely withdrew the mm. or like they ma- came to an agreement or a settlement. Mm. Obviously because this guy is money. Mm-hmm. What else? Yeah. So scary. So that's why I'm like I just feel like there's a lot that would be happening with probably a lot of our favorite artists that just gets completely swept under the rug. Mm. Like I feel like Cassie did something really brave and like drastic to be like mm. you know to go so public and but obviously she she she's she's the allegations are out there which is good Mm. but yeah we're not really going to know exactly what happened but maybe this will get more women to um speak up if things you know happened Mm, but it's just crazy I'm yes, going to move on to the sweet of the week mm-hmm. um, on a lighter note. Yeah, please. On a lighter note, I have been doing, oh, I just started today. Um, <laughs> so me and my friend, me and Melina, yeah. we were like, talk, we were together the other day um, and we were talking about um, discipline and I'm like, yeah. oh my God, my discipline like is non-existent. <laughs> like, I just feel like I have, so, and it was like small things. Like I'd be like, oh, I need to clean my car mm. and I couldn't, like I, I just wouldn't do it yeah. or I need to, um, I want to put these pictures in this new photo frame to like make my spare room look really nice. Wouldn't and I just don't do it. Mm-hmm. If there's no re- like deadline or urgency or it, it's like I was okay with the standard for myself just being like pretty low low. Mm-hmm. And it was just like frustrating me cuz I'm like I just don't want to like why? Like why do I do this thing? When, when people come I'm rushing to clean my house, but yeah. like why can't I do that for myself? Yeah. And then we were just talking about discipline and all that kind of stuff and then we're like, all right, let's just do it. Let's do a challenge mm. where we have. So apparently she saw she saw the challenge on TikTok and it's 75 days and you're supposed to do little basic things for yourself. We, you come up with your own list. Mm. So my it's like the non-negotiables, like drinking two liters of water. Um, I think we made it 1.5 because two, two liters, liters is a lot of water. water. It's like <laughs> <laughs> my mom was like, no, 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 no. That's too much. <laughs> How does she know? She's like, she, she, gets a, she gets a jug from the kitchen and she's <laughs> pouring like all the water. She measured it. She's like, it's too much. I was like, you're right. You know, it's too much, mom. So we made it 1.5. Um, reading five pages of like any book a day yeah. that you are like currently reading, but like sticking to those five days. And like morning could be like your affirmations or whatever you want want to do um mine is like i also put in like making myself a smoothie every single every single morning nice. and having three meals a day so in my smoothie being one and then like two other meals mm. and then just like little things like you know um i also had like doing like posts every two days or mm. things like that just something where i'm like pushing myself a little bit to do things that i want to do yeah. but keep pushing away from doing it because i'm just like lazy or mm have no reason to do it so i'm like let me just challenge myself so this was day one i had my smoothie it was great yeah and What's, what was in your smoothie? what well, was a juice it was like mango and pineapple chia seeds and honey wow. yeah 
cool. So it was nice. I bought like my little, all my fruits and stuff. Like it's frozen, mm. not like cutting them up every day. <laughs> Fair. It's start. We have to start somewhere. Yeah, there's nothing wrong with frozen fruit. Yeah, and I'm drinking. I had like I think I've had like one liter of water today. So I'm gonna have the. I'll, I'll finish 500. Oh, and 45 minutes of exercise a day. So that could be a walk. Kay. That it's just like 45 minutes of moving, moving your body, and you yeah. could like do 20 minutes in the morning, 25 minutes at night. But mm-hmm. just like getting into the habit of like moving your body for 45 minutes. So yeah. Um, that's my sweet. Wow. Yeah. I'm so, whoa, girl. <laughs> I love that. Yeah. And I, it's so weird because, you know, sorry, just before I like, yeah, I was like, oh, you, it's weird because I'm so used to doing like whenever it's like a challenge, it's yeah. an, either like a diet yeah. or like, um, what's it called? Yeah, like diet or like just exercise every single day. So mm-hmm. today I was driving, I was stuck. I didn't make myself any lunch and I'm like, let me just get Maccas real quick because it's not part of my challenge to be eating healthy. <laughs> <laughs> Even though I'm not going to keep doing it, but I was yeah. like, it was a nice feeling to be like, yeah. oh, this is nothing to do with diet. Yeah, like, this is nothing so. to do. This is literally just a discipline challenge. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. That, I feel like that makes such a difference because it's not like you're restricting everything. You're not. And it's just a whole different. Do. Yeah. yeah. So I'll let you guys know how I go. Mm-hmm. Actually, we change it to 50 days and then you can add 25 at the end if you want to. Mm. But like, yeah is where i'm at are you guys like doing something about are you holding each other accountable or we're just uh like yeah we're doing just kind it of like yeah in a way but i guess like every day we'll be like oh yeah did you do it yeah, yeah i did it and then like or like at the end of the week we'll just say like did you do it or not type of thing yeah maybe because that makes a big difference yeah yeah 100 yeah, someone's like bitch because if it's just you it's so easy no to no, no, like, no no we're like t- we're texting each other like i sent yeah. her a picture of me drinking my smoothie <laughs> Like, yes, look at it. Because I feel like that one's the hardest one. That one's the one that's, like, the most out of my way. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It's the most out of my routine. Everything else is kind of, like, not in my routine, but it's, yeah. like, I can put it in. So Honestly, it's just a tiny little challenge. Yeah, I'm so, like, I, I, yeah, I love that. I feel like those, the little things are always the hardest. And it's just sometimes it feels like this big like mental block where yeah. it's just, like, why can't I do it? Why can't I'm I not, do it? I'm not doing it. And it always feels it always feels better when you do. Yeah, that's so. what I'm saying. I'm just like, just like, I don't know why. I just feel like the biggest seeps when I'm yeah. about to do it or do something. And I'm I like, know. for what reason? I know. Um, I we were going to put, I was going to put time management on my one, but um, it's and like. You don't do too much at once. Yeah, you know what I mean? <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, don't slowly, like slowly, I'm, I'm trying to be a better person now. Like, I've, I feel like I've eternally, I'm like, it's time to change. Because I think I need to sit down and think about it. Like, why are you so late? You know? It's not mm. even, I don't know. I really don't get it. So, I'm going to change my ways. Mm. We're slowly getting better. Um, yeah. Yeah, well, at least it's like, it's more than a lot of people to be, like, conscious of it. Like, you know, yeah, time, but it's a hard one. It's a hard one for me. It's <laughs> that one's the <laughs> real challenge. Easy. I don't know what to do. No matter how many clocks I put in my house yeah. or like freaking like alarms, it's just not happening for me. Yeah. So I don't know. I'd love to hear what people, like chronic late people, like what is it? What is your reasoning behind it? I want to know if you guys are listening, send it to us somewhere. Mm. Like just DM us. Let us know what you're, why you're chronically late if you are late. Why do you think you're chronically late? I think it's just I don't see it as something. You something like like you I don't see it. Of, like, for example, if I'm like, I'm coming to your house. Yeah. In my mind, it's like, I'm chilling in my house. Mm. You're chilling in your house. Like, it's just like not that deep. Because mm. for me, it's like, okay, we could be. It's not like we have a finishing time. So a starting time is like a roundabout for me. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? So it doesn't feel as urgent because mm. it's like. Yeah, we're probably going to start, but then we'll probably end up being together for hours and yeah. there's no, like, structure to the time that we're spending together. So, I guess the time that we're meeting doesn't feel, like, urgent. Yeah. When it's things like work, um, I don't know. <laughs> I just feel like, do you know what it is? I don't think I suffer enough consequences for being late. <laughs> yeah. That's what it is. And I, with the classes, the fitness classes I've recently started, she, did, she makes us do 50 burpees. If you're late? Yeah, I went late twice. And the second time she was actually like, yeah, we turn up 50 burpees. And Amina's so nice. So I'm like, oh, Amina, she has 50 burpees. And I'm like, <laughs> so I was, I, w- I try not to be late. I'm like trying my best to be on time with those classes. And I feel like I have been. Yeah, maybe you should just implement that in your life. Yeah. Like if you're late, just like do 50 burpees. Okay. Because like. Bitch. Who's going to hold me accountable? Me. 
<laughs> you're gonna be like do 50 burpees before we start this episode <laughs> <laughs> nah, you're no. I'm I'm getting better. We can yeah. report. Re, let's report back on this at the end of the year. Yes. Um. The other thing I was gonna say quickly is with the time thing, like for me, it's literally the opposite. Where I need to know what's ha- like. I can't have an open ended like we're just gonna hang out because mm. I just get drained. Like I need. That's why I'm on time and I leave places on time because mm. that's how my brain like structures the day. Yeah. So it stresses me out to just be like, oh, we're just like chilling, hanging out. Yeah. Like, when is this going to end? Way of <laughs> life. I feel like we're just like, I'm like a b- different people. Yeah. Very you know different, what I mean? Yeah. So it's not like, it's good. I feel like I need to be more like in the middle of. Yeah. Like, no one ways. I mean, like, don't be late, but um, no one way is 100% right. Yeah. Yeah. But, anyways, we're getting there. <laughs> Okay, let's get into this episode. Mm -hmm. So another, it's kind of like another bitter, guys, because there's just been craziness happening on the internet this week. This topic is going to be about Kiki Palmer and how she filed a restraining order against her former partner, Darius Jackson, Mm -hmm. and requested sole custody of their eight-month-old baby. Basically, it said that she has obviously accusations against him being abusive, manipulative, um, and she, yeah, on top of that, they separated as well. So Mm -hmm. that obviously i think sparked from the situation that happened with usher yeah. where she was like he went to social media and said like you're a mother like you know how to behave etc cetera, etc cetera. Mm-hmm. but she was talking about how he had been abusing her for two years straight um mm-hmm. and like he would put her hands on her the last footage that we all saw on social media was him i think he came into the house and he basically grabbed her and like threw her over the couch and just kind of like threw her to like pinned her against the wall. It was just, he was abusing her anyway. Mm. Um, and yeah, like obviously coming out, it's just sad because it's like Kiki Palmer. I'm just sad that it's happened in general, obviously, yeah. but it's like when you, someone as like, like Kiki, you really just would never know. Like she's such a happy go lucky girl. Yeah. Um, always like this like positive person always giving like providing a positive space online Mm. and it's just like the fact that she was being abused for two years Mm. decided to go public with her relationship Mm. within that time and then you know she had a baby with this man clearly she loved him Mm. and then all of this is happening in the background it's so scary it's so scary like i don't know my i'm i'm just I i honestly wasn't expecting this to happen like I feel like it went from obviously like everything that he was doing with the whole Asha thing was like major red flags, um, but it kind of went from bad to just like scary, horrible. I d- I did not think that, but this is the thing. Like you just don't know. You someone, don't know, obviously. But I'm really, and I also think it it's so it must be so hard for her to have this like public as well because mm. like their relationship was public and he just for some reason like loves to go online and share like everything like that recording yeah that the audio were, that leaked yeah, that you showed me before yeah um of the conversation that he was having with Kiki with and Kiki and his mom ma- for people that don't know like he basically like recorded them on the low mm. and just like came in obviously trying to set them up and the mum Kiki's mum is popping off as like a protective mother mm. um she did go like she said some things that were a bit like you know too far but then also it's like your daughter was being harassed and assaulted by this man I felt like mm. she was she went all like protective mother mode mm. and it's like, are you dumb to be posting, to be like recording this on the low and then leaking it? Like you sound, you sound psycho. He sounds know, crazy. Yeah. Like he, the things that he was saying to her, the things that Kiki said, she kept such a calm voice. And it's like, you're calling her out of her name. Mm-hmm. You're calling her a whore. You're calling mm-hmm. her this, that. Because it just, to me, like shows that you're just so insecure because you stepped into this relationship with this woman who's always been in Hollywood, who's always been a star, um, an actor, a like performer, what changed like nothing to the public really changed about kiki like she's always been this person so it was just crazy for him to be calling her all these things and being so it's just like now that you have a child with her do you feel like some sort of entitlement or some Mm -hmm. sort of like ownership or something it's just it was just crazy and i feel like throughout the whole thing like from what we saw he just looked like he did not look stable at all he did not look normal and it's funny because that's what she was saying in the recording she was like i think you have a personality disorder <laughs> like i think the chemi- 
cool she's your brain. brain unimbalanced are yeah. imbalanced because your brain is broken <laughs> yeah i was like oh um but she's right because i think for a long time even like when i was younger and stuff it, i think it 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 used to be normalized for a man to speak that way to like to 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 your partner or like anyone when you but for me like in the fact that he called her names mm. is wild to me like it's so immature and it just yeah like you said like screams insecurity because what type of man and he even said something about like i'm going to take my son and raise him as a man it's like you're not a man because Mm. a man does not call the mother of his children names a man does not put a finger on the mother of his children like a man goes out there and provides Mm. or like tries to find a way to keep a safe space for the family Mm. but what do you do Mm. because i'm pretty sure she's the breadwinner here and it's like what do you like everything that you do like he just screams so like he's such an insecure man to me it's like you do not provide for her Mm. like all you do is cause like havoc and grief and like just problems from Mm. what we're seeing because like i feel like kiki has kind of had a steady career kiki has someone been someone that is like doing great for herself you are supposed to be just be adding value but instead you're out here like just in the last two you are literally the drama that kiki has had in her career yeah, her whole the career. fact that her whole career has been fine yeah. and then this man comes in and then yeah. she's got like the craziest drama yeah. just shows what kind of person he is yeah. um And obviously there's like, I don't know, actually, no, I'm not even going to say there's two sides to this story because I just feel like this screams like he's the problem to Mm me. Yeah, Yeah, absolutely. And I feel like the way that he was talking, even to her mom, it's like, how, I don't know, like, how, how, how are you like that? How are you calling even her mom like these disgusting names? And there's no respect. There's no respect. What's, and then to, to post that, um, yeah, I don't know. And, it, you know, the thing is, I mean, obviously, like, he's not remorseful at all mm. for what he's done. And not that that's ever, any, like, an excuse problem, yeah. for, like, when there's, like, physical abuse. But it seems like he's pushing back. And it's, like, on what ground? On what ground? Like, at least just be, like, you know, I, like, I have anger issues and I shouldn't have done that, da-da-da. But instead silent. you're going to record them. And like. then post it. Like, it just shows, like, I'm pretty sure, I don't know. I just feel like, to me, it just shows that this guy's pretty stupid. Yeah. Pretty stupid. And I don't know. I just think that, like, obviously it's sad that, you know, that she's going through all of this. But it's, like, looks like you're better off without this type of person in your life. Yeah. I don't know. He's just not, not okay. He isn't. And, yeah. and you know to uh, all the people that were saying things like you know you wouldn't want your wife out there looking like that going back to the whole usher thing you knew who you were dating yeah. i feel like people need to be a bit more like discerning you're going you're stepping into a relationship you need to know who you're choosing to be with mm-hmm. and this person is showing you one thing and then being something else okay you've been deceived mm-hmm. this person is been this person don't try to come in and try to change who they are find someone that will you know what i mean be more suited to what you want and what you're looking for because there'll be someone out there Mm. but don't she was never like this overly conservative woman or whatever she's in the industry she's been in the industry like i don't know why you're coming in here acting like dumbfounded about what she's doing it's crazy Mm. yeah it's wild it's just wild i don't know and it's scary because i really feel like all of that is kind of like like i said like it's such it's so scary that those types of behavior, like men who are controlling like that and try to publicly humiliate you or um, control what you do, how you act, what, what you dress, it's the fact that it's gone to like physical abuse, like that pipeline is scary to me because there's some big red flags. Yeah. And I think like when we're dating, it's things to, to be look out for you yeah. and be wary of because. It's just yeah. cr- it's, it feels this whole like gender war and mm. divide thing that's happening because I just feel like yes yeah, some of it is like social media everyone's just talking mm. their like their BS or whatever but then it's like it's not just that it's like you're reading the comments you're seeing how people are thinking how men how mm. women are thinking and people are just like why would I want to be with obviously you're now like more guarded and you see something you're gonna quickly step back like, I just feel like people see these things online and it kind of fuels the like the divide even more because you're just more wary and more like 
you know, cautious of stepping into a relationship with the wrong person. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, it's scary. Anyways. Scary yeah. I don't know. I think the world is just like things are just coming out and it's just been, it's been really confronting. It's hard to look at. Yeah, it really Sometimes is. Like, oh my gosh. I can't. Let me just stay in my bubble. Let me stay in my bubble. That's why I'm so glad we've got sweet and bitter. I know. Mm. To see both. But yeah. let's move on to our final segment, which is the dilemma of the the week. So this this person sent in a dilemma saying, I am so bored with my love life. For months now, I've been it has been dry AF. Unlike some of my friends, I actually do try to put myself out there. For years, I was on Bumble, Tinder, Hinge, bars, clubs, everything. I went on multiple dates but literally couldn't find one viable option. I'm older, almost in my 30s. So I feel like I'm genuinely running out of time and options. I don't want to worry about these things because we are supposed to be we are supposed to be fine being single, right? But honestly, it is all starting to stress me out. I'm so burnt out, tired and over it. I deleted all of my accounts and I'm honestly and I'm honestly CBF going to bars, etc. What do you think I should do? I'm thinking of moving states cuz WTF is going on, but that seems so drastic. Is there really no one that no one there out for me? Am I being or am I being a little bit impatient? This is a <laughs> this is a juicy dilemma. Oh my god, sister! Do you know what I'm gonna say? Mm. And I'm gonna say the drastic option: like take a chance and move to a different country. Because mm. if you feel like you've exhausted your options, like I would say, you know, this summer's around the corner. Spend a little time outside. Yeah. Try to meet some of the, you know what I mean? Like be a little bit more bold and like put yourself in positions where you can like, if you see something you like, go for it that's one step you know what i mean if you're trying to not do too much like go for it even if you feel because i've been in situations where i'm like that person is attractive i don't know how i'm going to approach this and i'm i'm not i'm just not gonna do it because (laughs) it's awkward and i feel like i don't want to deal with the awkwardness of it so you cannot afford to like if you feel like you want to put yourself if you feel like you want to date be a bit more intentional if you feel like you connect with someone a little bit like you can see a connection there or like you can see Mm. some interest Mm -hmm. put yourself out there in the physical space like go and literally approach that person online dm them because you only live once and why not Mm -hmm. but if you're open to it babes if you're an australian citizen you have canada (laughs) you have the uk yeah you know what i mean while you're in the uk you can explore europe like save go overseas and like live your life because even if it's not um you know you're gonna find your husband out there you can i feel like there's more of a dating scene in in the other uh, other parts of the world like one um her age range where she's saying she's almost 30 Mm. thriving thriving we're not considered like old like mid i'm 27 and Mm. it's like i went to new york and i was just like oh i'm young Mm. i'm young i'm living my life everybody's outside sometimes you go outside here and you're like damn i should really be at home because (laughs) this is not the vibe you know so i feel like switch uh, like change your environments up like go overseas see what's out there Mm -hmm. mingle with people Mm. and like even if it's just like you want to have a fun dating experience overseas like I would take a chance and do that, to be honest. Mm, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's really good advice. I agree. Because, like, yeah, obviously we've, this has been spoken about quite a bit, but I truly feel like there's, like, not that many people in this city. Like, there's just not <laughs> yeah. the numbers. Like, unless, you you're open, the unless you're open-minded. Like, if you're not, yeah, like, I'm just trying to date with the... We're just either, assuming that she's obviously, like, oh, African, African or, like, yeah. or, like, black. But if she... Yeah. But even if... Even if you're not... I feel like the dating scene in general, like everyone's talking about it, even overseas and stuff. Yeah. It's trash. But at least overseas, there's more options. Like there's numbers. Yeah. I, yeah. So I think like if you're feeling burnt out, mm. maybe like a little trip might like revitalize it. Revitalize and it. Yeah. If you are completely like ready for a switch up, then move. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. If you can. If you can. If but you can't. Not, but obviously like... It's not if you can't yeah. though, go to a different state. Like go to a different set state. Your Tinder, Bumble, set it international. Period. Set it to a different state. Mm. I would say explore, see what's happening in Sydney. Mm. Do a little Perth, 
brows, yeah. Brisbane, you know? Yeah, no shame. Just no shame. You no never shame. know who you're going to find. But, like, mm-hmm. that's a really good one to, like, set your location to other places. Mm-hmm. And then, you know, maybe he'll be like, let me take you out. Yeah. Come come to Sydney. Yeah, exactly. And if you if you really connect with someone, there could be people that are looking to move to Australia, like, who have their... This is if you set it to a different country. Yeah, if you set it to a different country. Yeah. Um, you might have, even if you set it to a different country, you meet someone, m- imagine you move and it doesn't work out. Still, that's fine. You're in a different you country. Have some, yeah, you know, like yeah. that helps with the bridge. But it's like, there's definitely options. And then also just quickly, like, don't just, like, if you're, if you're burnt out, you can also take a break and try again in, like, you know, a couple months or something because you don't know who you're going to find. Literally. Um, you know, so th- it's not like there's no hope in Melbourne, like, or whatever state you're in, but it could just be worth, like, exploring other options. Yeah. Um, and being more open, I think being more open-minded, like, not always, like, turning down your usual, like, if they're not your usual type. Yeah. But, you know, um, I I totally get the whole feeling, like, this, you're in a rut when it comes to that stuff, mm-hmm. so... And I take on take on the advice. Let us know what you did because we want to hear the feedback. And to anyone else that wants to send a dilemma, you can always send it through all the links in our bios. Guys, we want to hear them. We love them. We say this every week. Make sure you like and subscribe. Leave comments on our YouTube channel. And yeah, we'll see you again next week. Thank you. Bye. Bye.